Here's a list of all the cool new spots in New York City that you should go eat at if you're visiting and you don't want a typical experience. Yeah, a lot of people always ask us, should I go here or should I go there? So we're gonna break it down, but here's the thing. All the spots we're about to tell you about opened up in the past five years. No diss to the legacy spots, but I just think, you know, it's time to, if you've been in New York a couple times, you could turn a new chapter. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications, but you know what else is part of the new chapter? A new chapter of New York City is Smala Sauce, guys. Great finishing oil. Check it out at the Instagram. There's a lot of cool content that we're making. Smala sauce.com if you want to order it shipping right now probably the number one tourist spot that people go to in lower manhattan is cats is there a substitute for cats i don't think there's an actual substitute for cats so what we'll instead say is when you go to cats and here's my opinion i've been to cats several times now get the club bread because they don't toast their rye bread so make the adjustment they might scowl at you they don't want you to get the club bread but they offer it. It's better and get mayo. Oh, and you should get mayo, even though the old generation, they frown on that, right? Yes. So we're just telling you, if you're going to go to Cats, which I recommend go to Cats, just hey, change your order a little bit. I'll let you guys know in a little secret, Andrew. Last time, the Dominican worker, he was like, you know, you know. He doesn't want to recommend it, but he was like, yeah, you know what you're doing, Bobby. Yeah. You know what you're doing. I, I, is mayo and club bread. But with their meats, cat's meats are great. Um, moving on, Andrew, <sighs> instead of waiting in line at the world-famous Dominic Ansel's that invented the cronut, where else should they go? Because I, I'll tell you this, Dominic <clears throat> Ansel's, Andrew, they had an amazing run, but there might be a lot of new bakeries that people are overlooking. There's some really cool bakeries. Libre Bakery, delicious, amazing croissant. You got Lady Wong for the Malaysian desserts, the Chinese-Malaysian uh, pastries and stuff. Lisi which is an incredibly hard to get Korean ran like, like what is it like museum bakery? Like they just sell like, they sell out every day. I've never seen yappies, Asian yappies almost kick down a door like it was a Jordan release, yeah. except for Lisi Bakery. This one's crazy, that, that'll be hard to get. Patisserie Fouet over on 13th Street. La Durée for just straight imported French uh, desserts and pastries. They're imported like from France like that. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a whole bunch of donut shops. Um, instead of the pep slice from Joe's, try a fig and bacon slice from L Industry. Yo, Joe's is great for what it is, and it's there and it's accessible, but by no means is Joe's the best pizza. L like, it would be a shame if you came to New York and you only had a pep slice from Joe's, right? Yeah, Joe's is fine. It's just not that great is what I'm saying. And then also Prince Street Pizza is on there too, which I don't deny is still pretty delicious. Racist. But check out Cuts and Slices over in Brooklyn if you can. But if you're back in the city, Upside Pizza with their mushroom slice, that's a great slice. Lucia's in Soho, Grand Street Pizza, and Scar's Hot Boy Slice. Instead of an old school Italian-American sandwich from Pasillo's or Parisi, should they check out all Antico Venayo, which is a chain from Milan. Yeah, and they're serving Florence-style street sandwiches. I think they're very unique. Check it out. The bread is delicious. You do need to get extra add-ons, though. You need to get more meat because the Europeans, you know, they, they just don't put as much meat packed in there. You got to uh, spend for the extras. Instead of getting expensive gourmet tacos that are 7 or $10 each at a place like Rosie's Mexicano, Andrew, they should go to Los Tacos number oh one. Oh my gosh, Los Tacos number one is very good, even in my opinion, compared to the tacos I had in LA. Still very good. Right, you're saying even if it was in LA, it would rank high up there. Yeah, I think so. Taquiero Ramirez over in Brooklyn does like CDMX, you know, Mexico City style tacos, pretty good. But you got to go to Brooklyn. Yo, I got a crazy deep cut one. Go to the Birria Landia truck and get consomme, but don't get the tacos. Get the mulita. Their mulita is crazy. It's like a hyper elevated Mexican pizza, but more ah. authentic from Taco Bell. Instead of Wafung, a shout out to Wafung, which is a, a $5 chasio spot, right? Yep. Where should they go? I would say you will find better meats at Ye Wong. Wing Especially Wong, for duck. NB Wing Wong for duck. Hey, hey, roast meats for the modern style of duck. And King's Kitchen. Now, I will say this. Wafung, the price is hard to beat. $5, you're going to get rice, veggies, and right. meat. But those are your other options as far as meat spots. And, and I would say, you know, like every spot's going to have its specialty. Like King's Kitchen for roast pork and some of the other ones. You know, some people get pea pot duck, which is a very special style. I'll pop that up. Instead of going to Chinese Tuxedo, Andrew, which is a very expensive uh, I guess spot in Chinatown that's more meant to be, what, elevated Cantonese food, but for uh, non-Asians, go to Potluck Club. Potluck Club. I, I think that I would tell anybody 
who is Chinese American, especially if they're Cantonese American, to go to Potluck Club. Mm -hmm. um, instead of whatever Italian spot you were going to go to, and shout out to Emilio Bellatos, I still like it a lot. Try Teresi. Yeah. Dude, oh. Teresi is amazing. And actually, like maybe 20% of their menu is a little bit Asian influence. I'm not telling you that's why you should go there. But literally, I just had the bread there before. Well, they have a hoisin duck on the menu, right? Yeah, but just their appetizers are delicious by themselves. So definitely check out Teresi I, over on Mulberry. I, I like Olio e Pio, too. I mean, I believe it's from Italy. They do some carbonaras, but a little bit of American style in there to, to still make sure there's the appeal to the, the masses. Um, instead of never having Georgian food, try one of the many Georgian spots in lower Manhattan. New York has a lot of Georgian restaurants, and Georgian food is really good. I think Georgia food might be one of the, is that the most underrated unknown cuisine on earth? Kachipuris, you know, Kinkalis. Have you guys had them? European, Arabic, a little bit of influence from the Mongols. Woo! Instead of not getting Tex-Mex, because you think Tex-Mex sucks in New York, because obviously New York is very far geographically from where there's good Tex-Mex, they should check out Yellow Rose from San Antonio. Mm, that's really good Tex-Mex. Really underrated, brand new. I mean, the last three years, whatever. Instead of a basic brunch at Ruby's Cafe, which I still like Ruby's, Andrew, try out Thai Diner. Mm. They got a Isan Saoy breakfast wrap. Yeah. That's really good. Instead of going to fast food and getting soft serve, Andrew, where should they check out? Soft Swerve. Soft Swerve is an Asian soft serve spot. Still really, I think it has amazing ube, amazing matcha. I love their seasonal flavors. It's really good. Right, but the consistency still feels like McDonald's. Oh, yeah. Instead of trying out a 1990s Zhejuan style spot, which is the style of Sichuan food that came, what, I believe in the 70s with Cecilia Chang, or sons opens up P.F. Chang's. Anyway, shout out to them for bringing regional Chinese cuisine. But it's not at the Zhejuan point anymore, right? right, right? right, right. We're at the Sichuan point. Mm. Sichuan Mountain House, Mala Project. This is one of your favorites, Spicy Moon. Love Spicy Moon. What, what, what is Spicy Moon? It's a moon? vegan Chinese spot. Very, very good, though. And I think there's so many spots that opened up in the past five years. Cafe China reopened. Chili, Blue Willow. That's more Hunan. Lunar is a brand new spot. I'm just saying that these spots, just go to those and say, you know, shout out to Han Dynasty from the 90s. But it just, I'm done with Zhejuan. I'm moving on to Sichuan. If you never had Chinese skewers before in your life, go to the Grand Street Skewer Cart. I mean, you just went recently. You said it got better. It got better. I'm, I don't know if it's because the fan that blows out the smoke got dirtier, so it's more valid. But I'm telling you, it just tastes very authentic. Mm. Uh, more authentic than even I remember from a few years ago. Instead of just getting regular pad thai, Andrew, Thai food is popping right now. All the national SEO on, uh, on the stats says Thai food is number one. But what do people need to try? Oh, man. So Thai food in New York is really good. Uh, you can get the pad thai at Pranacon. You can go get the shrimp curry over at Soother. You can get the spicy larb at Sam Tum Dur and the sausage. Get the Isan sausage there as well. Pork neck at Dab Dab. And you can also, one of the hottest Thai restaurants, Bangkok Supper Club. Yes. Instead of going to an old school NYC diner, and shout out to them, man. They, they, they're still good. Still go to them. But I'm saying you could try out Golden Diner, mm. which has some Asian influences, right? Golden they got diner. a green tea matcha crumb cake. But they also do really good pancakes, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or waffles, I mean, I think. Instead of a regular old school steakhouse like Peter Luger's, you can go to, I guess... Modern ethnic theme, theme steakhouse. This is Carne Mari, which is an Italian themed one, or J Spec, which is a owned by a Japanese Miyazaki meat company. They Ooh. own J Spec. Uh -huh. Miyazaki is above Kobe Wagyu. Yeah. Like that's it's another grade up. And uh, how about this sleeper pick, Andrew Ichibante, late at night, the steak with the garlic chips. Hey, but maybe if you just want a whole new experience, I really recommend you guys check out an Argentinian steakhouse. There's a mm. couple around Lower Manhattan. Argentinian steakhouses are very, very good. Yeah, they got Kung Pao Duck Wings, a Bowery Meat Company. That's kind of like a funky fusion dish. Too. I, it just goes to show you, once you step out of the, uh, the ones with the recipe book from 100 years ago, you get more inventive stuff. Shout out to the old spots, too. I'm not going against them. I'm just offering alternatives for people who have gone come many times, right? Instead of get, never getting corn in NYC or going to the gentrified elote spot like Tacombi, Andrew, get the elote with crumbled white queso, blanco queso, from Cafe Habana. Woo. That's delicious. Instead of going to Donut Plant, shout out to Donut Plant, Andrew. How about Cora, which is a Filipino bakehouse? They got ube cookies and things yeah. like that. Also, check out Supermoon Bakehouse. Check out the Donut Pub. They have a s'mores donut. Really good. 
Peter Pan Donuts in Brooklyn, Wild Air Donuts over on Orchard Street. Those are also very delicious. Yo, These that's, are very good donuts. That s'mores donut has like 600 calories. It's really good, though. Instead of going to a random pho spot, which is still good, we still do that, uh, check out Saigon Social, D-on-D, Madame Vo, Mom. Mm-hmm. Uh, mom has a pho gas service with the wide noodle, had noise style, crazy. Um, instead of random NY Chinese hood food, Andrew, four chicken wings, pork fried rice, where should they check out? Uh, Still in the same price point, though. Spicy Village. That's a classic. Cheap eat and uh, has a lot of flavor. And then, uh, But if you want to go to Brooklyn and you want a kind of modern, spicy Chinese fried chicken experience, go to Pecking House. Pecking House over right, in Brooklyn. We're popping up right with the Tianjin chilies. Yeah. That's, that's brand new, guys. Listen, guys, I'm telling you, it's a whole new chapter. Instead of halal, guys, go to Adele's. Adele's. But Adele's got what a two hour wait, hour and a half. Yeah. I will say this: sometimes random bodegas actually have better uh, halal plates than you think. Um, instead of Shake Shack, which Andrew Shake Shack's debatable. It, it came from New York. It went global. Some people call it an elevated Wendy's. Some people think it's the best burger because it oh. came from Eleven Madison Park. Where should they check out? Uh, Hamburger America opened up by a hamburger aficionado. Was it George Motts? I forgot his name. Yeah, Al Cheval for their forty five dollar burger. It's kind of worth it, but it's an interesting uh, experience. 7th Street for the value, and they are a New York staple now. And then KO Burger over on Eldridge is really good. And then Gotham Social supposedly has amazing burgers. I haven't had it yet. Um, instead of typical cheap Chinatown dumplings, which have been around for, what, 20 years, you used to be able to get 10 of them for a dollar oh. back in the day on oh, Canal, I mean, right? Dollar dumplings, guys, I mean... Listen, Shu Jiao over on Grand Street is still really good, but I would also check out Sammy Wago, which is open late. Oh, Andrew, the people who started Sammy Wago were Guotia experts from Taipei that moved to New York. So wow. I just think it's a new thing. It's only like two years old. Wow. Instead of typical ramen, right? Ipuro, maybe Momofuku noodle bar or whatever. Uh-huh. Try the Tsukumen at Tabe Tomo, but some people also prefer Okiburo. Yeah, I would say get the chicken ramen at Okiburo. The stamina ramen at Mr. Taka. Just any place that has stamina ramen is generally a pretty good indication that they're doing something more deep cut. Ooh. Because not everybody does stamina broth. Ooh. Um, instead of not getting chicken rice in New York, because you think it's just the L.A. Savoy SF chicken and rice thing, go to Lo Yao Ki. Oh. Or, or Andrew, me chicken and rice in Greenwich Village. The Thai style is really good at me chicken and rice. Super authentic for Manhattan. Goes, Of course, Queens is a whole nother world. This is all Manhattan stuff, guys. Instead of getting typical late night white low Chinese at a place like what, Hop Key or Hop Lee, Andrew, where should they go? Uncle Lou's. Uncle Lou's is good, man. That's a new classic. Salt and pepper pork chops, man. It's Stand by it. That's low wok heel food. You know, like sort of like a 1960s Chinatown menu, but a little bit updated. So it's kind of like that nice middle spot where if you like hyper modern stuff like August gatherings, you like old school stuff like hop key, Uncle Luch sort of uh, triangulates it in the middle. Instead of not getting Xinjiang Uyghur food, Andrew, they should just go to Tangri. Tangri? Yeah. Or uh, was it Lang's Kitchen? No. Shang's Kitchen? Oh, okay. Zhang's Kitchen. Zhang's Kitchen uh, kind of serves like a mixture. It is a, a halal Chinese restaurant. They're hui, hui, yeah. Very delicious. Very, very delicious. Instead of not ever trying food from Guizhou, China, get the dry, spicy chicken noodle from Burt Bowl. Lots of flavor. Yo, literally, Burt Bowl might be one of the most underrated places in the entire land of Manhattan. Yeah. Uh, instead of going to an old school gelato spot or one from Italy, I feel like those are good, but the flavors are limited. They're all like chocolate, everything. Try Anita Gelato or... Uh, El Laboratorio de Gelato. You love going to that one. I would say I really like Sunday's Best. It's actually a Korean-owned. You can get Asian-flavored gelato, and it's delicious. Right, you can get the Korean barley injo me it, in, on the gelato, right? It's worth, It's worth. like, if you're in K-Town, you're eating dinner, you might as well get Sunday's Best afterwards. Instead of not getting beef noodle soup because you didn't even know it was available, go to Whole Foods, very fresh noodles, and the, in this way, and this one's kind of slept on, Andrew, tangy noodles. Wow. Good. Um, Instead of thinking that cheap, delicious empanadas are something that people only eat, you know, not in Manhattan, like maybe in Queens, like Corona, for sure they got them. They can check out certain empanada mama's locations, especially the one in East Village. For some reason, they make their empanadas extra good there, right. and they're always like two for four. Right. Like, always got a BOGO deal. So it's right. like, man, for $4, you can't beat two of these. Um, instead of hitting a regular bar, Andrew, why don't they check out Ye's Apothecary, Jade and Clover, Chinato, 
all of these are Asian themed bars. Nori. Mm, those are cool bars, especially in the Lower East Side. All within the past five years. Andrew, instead of getting all you can eat hot pot at 99 Favor, where do they need to check out? Lao Jia or Hometown Hot Pot, both very good options. And guess what? Dolar Shop after 9 p.m. has a $45 all you can eat option. I've been with people to Dolar Shop, it was like $100 a person, depending wow. on how much Wagyu you get. Instead of a uh, half club, half restaurant spot like Hakkasan or Tao, Andrew, where should they go? Uh, you can go to the Tiger, which is going to give you a similar experience, but it's more Asian. It's like more, more, more Southeast authentic, Asian. right? It's more Southeast Asian like flavors, yeah. It's Instead of not getting Jamaican food because you said you and your friends wanted to go to Crown Heights to go to a Jamaican neighborhood, I, I mean, say Miss Lily's is still passable, man. Okay, and I also think Jamrock Jerk Chicken, which uh, I don't know where the location is, but you can order it on Uber Eats. There's a Peppers. Oh, it's in Greenwich, yeah. There's Peppers versus Peppers. Yeah, there's a Peppers Jerk Chicken and a Peppers, and then there's Jamrock Jerk, so there's just a lot of jerk. There's a lot of expense. I think that there's a lot uh, of jerking over. Last in New York. lop is good too. Is is it overpriced? Probably yes, but I think it's. Uh, listen, sometimes you, you're not going to spend the time to travel out into uh, the zone. Some if you have time, you know, just just do the city version. Right, right, right. Anyway, long story short, Andrew, would I just feel like New York, particularly Manhattan, over the past five years, four years, three years, has just gone over a gigantic like completed the arc. Mm -hmm. It's like in a new chapter of food. It is. It is. And uh, it's very exciting. I think that the classics like Cats and, you know, the institutions are still going to be Shanghai. around. Still going to be around. Still good. I would still recommend people go there. But if you want a atypical experience, like let's say this is your second or third trip to New York City. And you're like, you know what? I did Cats and Joe's and all that stuff. You know, I can dig a little deeper. I, but I, th this list is perfect. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think of our uh, list in the comment section below. Instead of here, go there. Uh, of course, you know, we're supporting everybody, but just trying to give you guys, put you guys up on some game. Uh, let us know your recommendations in the comment section below. I really think uh, the food scene is in an exciting place, even as high as the rents are and how squeezed the margins are or whatever. Let us know what you think. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.